RCA Neo Geo, the King of Fighters 98. Hello again, I am Blunty, and we can just call it King of Fighters 98. It is available on the Nintendo Switch eShop. 98 was the fifth in the franchise, and it is widely regarded as one of the best from its day. Originally appearing in the arcades and on the Neo Geo home console, it later saw ports to Neo Geo CD, the original PlayStation, and the Dreamcast, though there it was retitled as King of Fighters Dream Match 1998, for some reason. It also got a remake on PlayStation 2, subtitled Ultimate Match. There is no plot, there is no story, no effort to cram in character motivations or backstory, just a pure challenging technical fighter that even now stands the test of time. Also, if you haven't guessed yet, I suck at it. I know it, I recognize it, no need to point it out in the comments endlessly. <laughs> I did take a frequent whack at it in the arcades back in the day, especially a particular arcade I used to frequent who had turned down the default difficulty on this particular machine a little bit. <laughs> But I always wanted to be good at it, because as I watched those who were good at it, it was effing mesmerizing. And here on the Nintendo Switch, it seems to stay pretty pure to the original Neo Geo experience. Some hardcore Neo Geo arcade fans than I can chime in here about how fateful it is, but it feels pretty fateful to me, given my relatively faded memories from back in the day. In fact, it's so faithful you can play it in the original Japanese, or English if you like. The default control mapping will make your brain hurt if you stare at it too long. The Y button is the A button, the X button is the C button, the B button is B, but A is also D, and ZR is also A, and ZL is B, but L is credits and R is start. I have a migraine and I've gone cross-eyed. <laughs> you can remap this to your liking if you wish, but... As counterintuitive as it seems at first blush, it is made this way to accommodate the button combos used throughout the game. On the switches option menu, pulled up by the plus or minus buttons, you can save states, which is nice. There's some display options dealing with the frames and backgrounds for the 4x3 game presented on the switches 16x9 display. There's online rankings and the ability to put hideous emulator-like filters over the entire thing if you've somehow erroneously convinced yourself this is actually how these games looked back then on CRTs. Spoiler alert. They didn't look anything fucking like that. When it comes to control, I'd have thought that the Pro Controller's D-pad would easily be my favourite option. After all, the game was designed with digital directional input in mind. But to my surprise, I found myself feeling a little more in control with the thumbstick on the Pro Controller. I don't know if they've tweaked the input processing or something to accommodate this, but try it. Your mileage may vary, but for me, it worked. In handheld mode, where there would normally be a D-pad, the Switch of course has its directional buttons to facilitate its sideways Joy-Con 2 player mode thing. And, as you may imagine, it sucks for this game. As indeed I expect it will for Street Fighter 2 when it arrives a little later on this year. But yeah, there's, there's no rescuing this. The D-buttons suck so hard for this. It just, just makes it almost unplayable. However, the shorter, narrower throw thumbstick on the Joy-Con is adequate though. Still not ideal for a game this fast and technical, I don't think, but you can get used to it. The experience here with King of Fighters 98 has left me less nervous about further arcade and classic and retro games making their way through to the Switch, and how their control schemes will adapt. But this game, more than any other I've tried so far, has made me quite thankful that I indeed snatched up a Pro Controller. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.